Have you ever visited Troutdale, Oregon? It's the cutest little town at the entrance to the Columbia Gorge. And there's a new mayor in town. What does he have up his sleeve for the future of this scenic region? Today we'll meet Troutdale's mayor, Randy Lauer, and find out what he envisions for the city. Randy Lauer, welcome to Community Hotline. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Monica. I appreciate the time. No problem. So uh, as a new mayor of uh, Troutdale, can you tell me what your vision is for Troutdale? Like, what do you what do you want the image, the public image of Troutdale to be? I want Troutdale to, first and foremost, to remain Troutdale. I want us to really dive into the intricacies and the wonderful things that make us who we are out here, far out here in East County. Um, you know, I want us to have that identity that sets us apart from the other counties and or the other cities in Multnomah County and the other cities in East County, you know, right. wonderful. Wood Village is wonderful. Fairview is wonderful. But I want people to think of, you know, a small town um, neighborhood feeling with wonderful store shop owners and uh, just a really tranquil place to be when they think of Troutdale. And I want that to set us apart uh, moving forward. That's a good image to have, I think. I mean, right now we're we're just in this boom of development for Troutdale standards, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, we want to make sure that we're doing it right. Yeah, so just yeah. keeping keeping intact the the history and, and everything that's made us so wonderful up to date, and just keep that in the, in the forefront when we when we decide where we want to go in the future. Okay, you, you said you were talking about development, and I. Um... I remember uh, going down to Cannon Beach when it was very small and getting bigger and bigger and about how they set um, city ordinances where they, they couldn't go too high and they couldn't have too many um, chain restaurants and that kind of thing. I mean, are you looking at doing some of those things to keep that small town feel? We already have certain codes in place uh, with our development that um, certain sectors of the city were not, you know, we're not allowing developers to come in and, and, and go so many stories high. Um, what we okay, don't want to do, yeah, what we what we don't want to do is block um, anybody's potential view of right. Gorge East or you know the hills of Washington looking north. And so yeah. um, we have those already set in place. But um, with any any type of future development, there's always that um, there's always a level of uh, security built in. That might not be the right word but um, control that the council has with uh, bringing in certain types of development and all those rules that we have in place, we can go back and, and relook. And if there's just something that just fits so wonderful in Troutdale that just kind of just sets it apart from everything else, we have the ability to go back and make adjustments to some okay. of those rules, yeah. So yeah. again, looking forward, but doing things um, with a, with keeping Troutdale in mind first. Good, good. So keep it keep it like it is, but but just make it even better. Yeah. So I know there's um there is a lot of construction going on. There's a, the Halsey corridor, which I know you share with um, other other cities out there. There's a new development that's going on just south, I think, of the Columbia Gorge Outlet Mall. Um, it, it's directly east. So tell me a little bit about that. What is that going to be? So so that land, it's um, just over 20 acres. It was, uh, at one point in time, it was the city's wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. So it's been about 20 years since it's been the wastewater treatment plant. So within those two decades, it sat and just dilapidated. So oh. one of my goals when I came on as council, as a city councilor back in 2015, was to get some sort of decision made on what the city was going to do with that land back there. Cause it was just, it was just a blight. It was just, it was bringing down the North section of our town center in the city of Troutdale. And so um, one thing that we did was go ahead and acquire the all of the land from the previous owner that had it. Um, it's now in our sole control. And we have went through the lengthy process of getting it, ready, getting everything decommissioned, um, everything taken out that was a hazard, uh, the correct way working with DEQ, and getting it to a place now where we can actually start talking to developers to help help act to, to help bring our vision to a reality. And so that's what I talk about when we have development here in Troutdale. What we're hoping to do with this development is not only not only grab onto things that are um, easy targets, low-hanging fruit right now, but to think, you know, what transcends us where we're at right now and people that when they come to Troutdale, when our kids grow up, when our kids have kids and they want to go downtown and do things that they're going to appreciate what we did here back in 
the early 2020s. And so, so you're really doing this for your family and for the other families that, oh, that oh, live absolutely. there and will live there. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. just so whatever we are going to do is something that we're thinking of further on down the line and not just uh, what's affecting us right now. So not, not what's going to put the most money in your pockets now, but what will be good for the future of the city. I mean, exactly. that's, that's important. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What we want people to come and enjoy when they come and visit Troutdale. Yep. And I understand you are going to be taking advantage of the fact that there's a lot of bicyclists that come through town as well. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. We were a part of the, the Gorge Hub project and that, that is pulling together a lot of the cities along the, along the 84 corridor and the Halsey corridor. And so um, we're, we're getting certain development aspects that'll give uh, easier spots for cyclists as they make their way up uh, east and west along the gorge to, to have a pit stop, to have a place to sit, to have a place to rehydrate, to have a place to maybe fix a flat tire. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're excited about that project as well. Good, good. There's a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, the other cities um, uh, and the the work that's going along the Halsey corridor. You, I assume, you're working with the other cities on the stuff that's going on there. Uh, how, yeah. how do how do you how do you work with the other cities? Is that is that is that a good uh, process? A good partnership? It's it's a good partnership. What I am going to say that it is difficult, and it's not difficult because of differing opinions or anything along that nature. It's difficult because when it comes down to it, we are three sep and it's Troutdale. Fairview and Wood Village. Mm -hmm. So three separate cities. Uh, we share that responsibility with Metro and Multnomah County. And it's difficult because we are three separate entities with three separate um, codes, three separate, mm. three separate ideas of what we want this corridor to be. So it's difficult in that, but it brings together a lot of wonderful conversations. So even though Troutdale has its own vibe and Wood Village in, in between the three cities has its own vibe and Fairview has its own vibe, we can come together on a, some sort of a, to agree upon some sort of color palette, if you will. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily it has to do with the paint, just, just a generic example, a color palette that we can agree on that we can take this palette and from there we can, we can develop for the future basically what our storefronts and what our Halsey corridor looks like in each of these cities with that color palette being the base of that development. So um, it's kind of what we're talking about right now is, is deciding uh, uh, what, what that color palette should be yeah. uh, moving forward. So something that'll kind of tie you it all, all together, but keep you unique in your own, in your own cities. Exactly, you like a jumping off point. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's great, I like that. Um, and there's some good people working in all those. All those there's styles. great people. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things um, when I was elected mayor, that was one of the things that I wanted to do with um, my four years in office is to grow and, and build upon those relationships that we have with other, uh, other municipalities and other other partners that we have like Metro and Multnomah County, you know, it's Good. things are changing right now and we want to make sure that we're in those conversations and, and having our voice heard and just be a part of, of the change and, and yeah. as positive as we can. So um, it, this committee is like the Halsey Corridor Committee is another way of us getting getting involved in there regionally. Good, good. So, uh, so that's a very positive thing. What about, what about, what are some of the difficult issues that you find you'll be facing here as mayor? Uh, what are some of the the troublesome issues that you have to deal with right now we're obviously like everybody else in the world um we're having to deal with the um the the COVID-19 pandemic and everything coming along with that um we're having to deal with the uh, restrictions and shutdowns mandated by the governor um I have a lot of stores and a lot of shops and a lot of restaurants on our main street that are that are struggling and have been struggling since since last year, and so, you know, that's not going away anytime soon. The the um, the ramifications from all the shutdowns and from the virus um, aren't going to go away anytime soon. So that's going to be something that I think we'll we'll all be dealing with throughout these next three and a half years. How much ever left is on my term. We're coming at it more from an economic standpoint. What we can do as a city, what we can do as an elected body to help. Um, prop up the businesses that have been struggling so hard, but also um, try to encourage other businesses to come into Troutdale at the same time. So we're having, we're having this conversation on two fronts. 
holding up the businesses we have, but then also encouraging other ones to come into town. And so that's something that even without the pandemic, uh, we would have focused on. Uh, we're just having to focus on it a little bit more now. Um, but it's, it's good work that needs to happen. Well, it, it does make it a little more challenging, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I was really excited to focus on um, our development site at the Confluence right behind the outlet mall. Mm -hmm. uh, because it was something that I think we can all be proud of when we get to a point where we actually have a plan. And now it's not taking a back seat by any means. It's super important and it will be in the forefront of everything we do, but everything else now is coming on from all angles and it's, it's just taking time away from other things. But like I said, it's an important, it's an important fight that we have in front of us and one that'll, that'll hopefully, you know, reinvigorate our, our city and the region as a whole. So right. So the, the long-term uh, long benefits will, will hopefully outweigh the, the pain of getting there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So um, what about other issues like um, homelessness, which is something that we're all facing no matter where we live, it seems like. Um, is that uh, something that you're, you intend to deal with in, in one way or another? Yeah, yeah, we we're having um, a significant increase in uh, crime that we have downtown, and uh, a lot of it is coming from um, the state park that we have just north of our city limits. That's the Sandy River Delta Park. Um, it's commonly referred to as Thousand Acres Dog Park out here by Trout Dalians, and so we've we've been so fortunate to have that park in our backyard for so many years for so long and it's just been a wonderful a wonderful place for people to go and unwind and, and walk their dogs and just enjoy being out in the in the nature of of the uh, river but after you know the the past few years the the homeless problem that's been hitting hard in Multnomah County and everywhere um, really took hold inside of the Sandy River Delta Park so we're having to deal with the repercussions of that and the ramifications of having all those people in there that are just, you know, absolutely destroying the, the natural spaces that is supposed to be for everybody. And um, the difficult part is we don't own the land. Um, we are, uh, it's owned by the uh, Department of State Lands and the Department of Forestry. Most of the problems that are happening in the Department of Forestry land. And so we're we're in talks with the Department of Forestry, with the Department of State Lands, uh, Metro and Multnomah County to try to come together to have these conversations to find a solution to what's happening in there. You know, it's not necessarily the, the, the hard thing with homelessness is it's not a one problem issue. It's it's a nuanced problem that has so many different factors involved with it. So, yes, uh, affordable housing could help, but attacking and helping the ones with uh, mental difficulties, the ones with um, drug and alcohol addiction, the ones that just are passing through and, and had nowhere else to go on their travels, um, helping those answering, try to answer those questions, I think is, is going to help this problem um, really try to curtail the problem. And it's, you know, it's difficult when we try to talk to the other regional leaders um, and they just want to they want to try to answer it by saying we just need more affordable housing. And really, you know, some of the I work outside. I've been a utility worker for municipalities for the past 17 years. So I've ran I've ran across multiple different types of people living on the streets. A lot of them, they they do. They're down on their luck. They just need a, a helping hand, a guiding person or organization to show them to the affordable housing. The majority of people don't want to live in a house. They don't want to live in, within the rules that a city confines them in. They like living on the fringe. And the problem with that is they're not necessarily following the rules that the rest of us are having to, and they cut down trees and green spaces. They, they dump hazardous chemicals right on the riverbank and they're burning. And it's just, it's, it's sad. And so these are the conversations that we need to have with these regional partners and we're moving along. I just got a, a letter that I'm sending off today to the, to the uh, legislature about helping us answer these problems. So hopefully we'll get, um, we'll get some responses and some, uh, some traction moving forward to help the people that are down there, but also to help the, the natural spaces that is just getting destroyed. We talked a little bit about how um, Trout Dell's been uh, affected by the pandemic and everything, and what you know you're trying to do. What else do you think you might 
want to do for the the citizens. Do you have any any just ideas of your own that you think would be really something fun to add to the to the city? I know you you know there's stuff for the kids and the adults and um, any other ideas that you're you having percolating in the back of your mind? <laughs> so I'm very glad you asked. So <laughs> one thing that you know, I've come to realize living in Troutdale and, and being on city council for Troutdale is there's so many things for families to do. There's so many things for adults to do. We have great restaurants. We have great shops. There's so many things for kids to do. We're so, so lucky to have so many parks in Imagination Station uh, Part 2. And um, just we've, we've invested so much on the infrastructure of children at play at um uh, people to come and, and spend their money at, at the shops and restaurants we have. We really don't have anything for teenagers or young adults. We really don't. And so one thing I would love to get on the radar, which I'm go I'm going to be pressing it pretty hard next budget year, is um, to get a skate park built for the uh, the youth here in Troutdale. Gresham has a wonderful skate park. Um, there's cities all around Oregon that have wonderful skate parks. Redmond has a great park. Portland has a few dotted all around schools. Um, it's time that Troutdale invests in the, in the activities of the youth and gives them something that they can be proud of and call their own, um, something they can take ownership of. And I think moving forward with a skate park would be fantastic. I used to skateboard when I was a kid. <laughs> Gresham and Troutdale. Um, I bet you did. I, I, I just had a feeling you must have been a skateboarder. But, I, but you're right, because it, it also is a good thing to, ha to have things for kids to do, mm -hmm. because otherwise, you know, it's yeah. just too many ways to get in trouble if you don't have something to do. So there's, I think a, that's, there's a saying that Grandpa Lauer always used to say, something about idle hands. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Have, if we had a really cool skate park, one that's um, out in the open, um, one that's well lit, one that is not off a side street or at the back of a park where people don't have to see it, one where one where the community can come out and see just how much our youth and our, our young adults would love to have this skate park. I think it would be such a positive thing. I would love. There's been a there's been an organization um, uh, spearheaded by a citizen. Um, his name's Tyler Cole. He's been trying to get a skate park for years now. It's really? been on the council. It's been on the council budget for I want to say, or council discussions. I want to say for almost, almost 15, 16 years, <laughs> 12, 12, 15 years. They've been talking about it. And so, um, when I came in, that was one of the things that I would love to have done is, is finally get something, get Troutdale on the map, get something for the for the young adults to enjoy, and and really just check that off the list for Troutdale moving forward. I think it'd be great. Maybe it just needs uh, mayor's backing and approval to get that going. Yeah, so yeah. I hope I hope that'll happen. That sounds great. Um, you um, you're you're kind of a family man, aren't you? You have a family here in in and you're from Troutdale, right? Yeah, I have. Um, my family was uh, I was born and raised in Gresham. My family grew up in Gresham. Uh, my grandparents and uh, they owned one of the first houses off Hensley in Troutdale. Um, my other grandparents worked at the Reynolds aluminum plant. Yeah. Um, they, they had a house in Wood Village. Um, my parents owned the house in Troutdale. And then when all the kids were, well, I'm all, ado I'm adopted. My, my brothers and sisters are adopted. Uh, I'm Latino. My sisters are Korean. My brother is Caucasian. And so we were all adopted. But once we all came, once the cornucopia of kids came, <laughs> Um, they moved out of the little farmhouse in Troutdale and, and bought a house in Gresham. So we grew, we, I got East County through my- You're East County in your blood, don't you? My, yeah. Great yeah. grandparents went to Gresham. My grandparents, my parents, my brothers and sisters, we all went to Gresham High School. Um, so yeah, East County runs through me through and through. So yeah. Good. Well, I think, I think the citizens did a good job in uh, voting you into this, this position. I think you, you fit very well. Um, and, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today and, and uh, share your vision for Troutdale. So it sounds ambitious and it sounds doable. And I, and I wish you the best of luck on that. Thanks Thank very much. Is there anything else you want to leave us with? Anything else we should know before I let you go today? Um, just that, just a word of encouragement. And, you know, times are hard, times are difficult, but reach out to your neighbors, ask for help, make sure someone doesn't need help and really just realize we're going to get through all this stuff, but we're going to get through it a lot quicker together. So uh, just have some grace and, and uh, some good conversations. 
I like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks to our viewers for watching today. So, you know, if you haven't been to Troutdale, you're missing out. Better check it out. And for all of you out there, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next time.